Oh, hi, it's Rob. And it's a gorgeous day outside. Actually, it's getting toward the evening now, so the sun is going down a little. Uh, I finished the harvest, the first harvest of the pepper garden. And um, I had quite a lot of peppers. That's a lot of peppers. Now they are different varieties. I've got some that are, you know, more batch varieties, but I've got a bunch that are weird one-offs that I'm not entirely sure what they're going to be like, but I can kind of get an idea by the, I mean, they're pretty obviously crosses of, you know, like ghost peppers or reapers or uh, scorpions. So these are, uh, those are like the top three that are the crosses in there. But I do have some that are just odd and I don't know what they're going to be like. Um, they are definitely hot. I did some samples on a couple of them and they are definitely in the hot variety. Um, so I'm going to do some seeding today. I've got some of the peppers, you know, the first peppers harvested and the ones that I want to keep and um, keep some seeds for so that I can uh, plant and hopefully get uh, sprouts for next year and, you know, probably following years. Uh, but I want to make sure that I get samples of all these so that I have them in case some of these weird off-brands turned out to be really amazing. I will tell you the one ones that kind of surprised me this year are the, the Butch Tea, uh, which is a scorpion reaper cross. Uh, had a lot of fruit on it and uh, it's big. So if that is going to have a really good flavor, I am definitely going to keep those. I also had a really good batch of habaneros this year. Uh, I planted quite a few of them, but I was really surprised at how well they uh, they fruited. Uh, planes going by. Uh, how well they fruited, uh, and how low to the ground they stayed. I was really amazed. You know, I. It was really kind of difficult to see them almost because they were so low to the ground. They, they hug the ground very much. Uh, so anyway, I wanted to show you some of the ones that I've got and at least, you know, go through. I don't know if I'm going to go through much of the seeding process because it gets pretty tedious, but uh, I just kind of want to show you what I'm doing this year. Um, I'm hoping that it will carry forward into oncoming years, but, you know, maybe there's some other better ways of doing it. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, it's going to get to work.
think I'm going to process most of these uh, using the vacuum bag system. Uh, that had that worked really well for the uh, habaneros this last year. Uh, there were there was no yeast, no no bacteria, nothing, no growth of any kind. It just you know it it expanded the bag and then it started to contract. So you can tell exactly when the ferment is 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 kicking in, when it's slowing down, when it's done. Uh, and it's, I mean, it's less messy than trying to do the uh, the brine system. Now, don't get me wrong, I like the brining, but I've always been left with, you know, all this brine, and, you know, it's like, well, what do I do with it? Well, you know, if I use it to start a new culture next year, or, the, you know, another culture going on, I could do that, but, I still end up with, you know, gallons of this stuff hanging around. So this gets rid of the the brine disposal problem, uh, and it you keep all the flavor. You know, so anything that you would lose in the brine stays in the mash. Uh, what I will likely be doing this year is, you know, I'll be doing a basic mash that's the peppers, probably some garlic, uh, maybe some spices thrown in, but it's going to be very basic uh, with salt, a little bit of sugar, uh, and I will let those go. And the nice thing about the, bra the, <laughs> the bag system is that it's sealed. Once it's done, you're not, you're not opening it, you're not exposing it to anything, so there's no pathogens in it. Uh, it stays really good it's it's basically self-preserved um, so I'll try it one thing I can do is once those are fermented if I don't use them right away I can uh, revacuum them out and suck out any of the carbon dioxide that's in there and then freeze them and they'll be just fine for use you know far in the future but I suspect that I'm going to be making enough hot sauce I probably won't freeze these so I'm gonna get into seeding. Uh, might show you one of these, but it's you know it's pretty basic. You you don't want to watch the whole thing. <laughs> 